Oh yes, there's some party animals down there. Check these guys out. They're just having a great time. I, I estimate close to 1,000 people. No, correction, about 2,000. Oh yes, quite a bit. Oh, there's a barbecue. Members of the ski club. Look at that hardcore competition. Fine people, fine people. You know, the ski club is made up of very fine people. I say, let's talk to you. Oh yeah, here's some more fine little ski club people here. Look at that. Tell you right? So who's going to tell you right here? Uh, that'd be me. Yeah? You going to tell you right? Going to tell you right. Oh God, you're going to tell you right. Right here. Are you there? Hey! I'm driving. All righty. You're driving. I'm driving. You're going to drive. Yeah, Beautiful. Drive. So who skis, who snowboards? I ski. You ski? Yeah. Snowboard? Who has a really good embarrassing story, your most embarrassing skiing, snowboarding story? Who has a good one? And I were in the lift line, and there's, it's roped off into different lines, and um, she was telling me that there was a cute guy beside me, and she was leaning over to tell me, and we both fell over, and we made the whole lift line fall. Oh, no, <laughs> wow. I fell, I grabbed Was a guy some, worth it? I grabbed onto some guy's pole, and I like broke off his like basket thing at the bottom. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty embarrassing. Had a great time? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tony, do you ski? Yes, I do. Yeah, what's your most like, embarrassing ski moment? Most embarrassing? Yeah. When I was going down the out of bounds area and I ran into a tree, but no one saw me. No one saw you? Except my brother. That's pretty embarrassing. Oh, it was uh, embarrassing for me. You're pretty much scarred for the rest of your life. <laughs> but nothing that the ski club can handle for you. Nothing. We're going to break you off your shell. We're going to break you out. Right on. Okay, we'll do that. All right. Season, or no, season before that, I just keep on for a free lesson at North Star, so I'll take, I decided to take a lesson this afternoon, and I got there late, like they said, be there too, and I was supposed to be there 10 minutes early, but they didn't tell me that, so I got there late. They'd already grouped people up, so they said, okay, you go with this group. So they sent me off with two other guys, and uh, they were like way below my level, and so I was like getting kind of pissed, and I'm like, fuck this. And uh, so the guy goes, the, like the sort of enemy run, he's like, okay, I want, so I want to see you guys turn down to the lifts like that. So I'm like, okay, and that's went straight down, like flying, I'm like, ha, I'm like hot dogging the way down. It was late in the afternoon, it's kind of slushy, and I'm just like hot dogging the crap out of it. And the other guys are way like they're up there too in their little turns. And right at the bottom, right at the very bottom, I like just leaned wrong and caught like a clump of snow or something like that, and went flying forward over my skis, landed on my glasses, busted my glasses, and like cut my face up up here. And wow. like, my whole glasses like broke and stuff like that. And uh, just slid, my ski was 20 feet up the hill. I had to walk back up and get us like that. And the instructor and the whole group's like down there waiting for me. Then I had to like go through the rest of the lesson with that one. I felt like shit. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. But you have overcome that, right? Of course. It's beautiful. Right? Seriously, but it was quite a long time ago. When I was about 10. <laughs> You're 10 years old, okay. Okay. When I was about 10, I went up to Gold Mine, which is now called Bear Mountain up in Big Bear. And I was in a ski school. And I was riding down the mountain, and then we got on the trail to go up. And I didn't want to tell my instructor that I had to go to the bathroom really, really bad. And so, in the middle of the ski lift, in the ski chair, I accidentally paid my dad. Oh no! It was quite embarrassing, you know? <laughs> that's that's a I good got story. Over it. We got over it. Glad. What's your name? Trouble. Trouble. Your name is Trouble. It's a nickname from now on. You will make sure you call it Trouble from now on. <laughs> This must be a world record, Guinness. That's just incredible. Ow. Look at that. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Stay to you. My original estimate was 2,000 people. However, it has jumped. There's nearly 5,000 people here. Lots of people. What a great time! Yeah, but what's your name? Yeah, Steve. My name's Rich. Rich? 
Guys, I have a question for you. I want you to tell me your most embarrassing ski experience. All right, first off, I don't ski, so the first time I go skiing, these guys take me down, the intermediate slope, don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm going straight down the hill, falls out, don't know how to turn. They go up this way, I turn, hit the powder. I'm lost in it, man. I'm very, can't find my skis, wake up. He's the bonsai beginner. Yeah, yeah. And you survive. Bunny slopes, man. Bunny slopes is where it's at. And you survive. Here, it was like when I was a junior in high school, and we were going up the T bars, and there were like tons of people in line, right? And the T bars are all a hard thing to conquer, we know that. Yes. And so I sat down the T-bar, which you're not supposed to do. Totally got dragged up the mountain because I was hooked the to the T-bar. Well, no, like a good 30 feet. Oh. Finally, I fell off, and then my skis fell off, and I was laughing so hard that I peed my pants in a puff suit, which is not a fun thing to deal with, and there was like 100 people watching me. So it was like oh, really wow. Oh, wow. That's a that's a pretty good story. And I really hope no one's going to see this, and if you oh, are, no one's going to see this. any less of me. Oh, this is... Because I was laughing so hard. That oh, yeah. Like, this is for our Oh, just private collection. Okay. Nobody's gonna see private this. Private collection. No one's gonna see okay, this. Okay, cool. Jen, who's rocking you today? Cowboy Ski Club is rocking. Cowboy Ski Club. Beautiful. Cowboy Ski Club. 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 Cowboy Ski Club.
that. <laughs> That's what you get for falling asleep there. What you doing there, Dano? Huh? What you doing there? Do a little jump. All right. Get some air. That way the wipeouts will be that much better. Yeah! yeah. yeah.
feel better. $2 shots and drafts starting at 3 o'clock. $2 shots and drafts? Yeah. Man. I like how they put that bathroom right at the end of that long, big bar. And those fucking beer specials. Damn, I almost didn't make it out of there. <laughs>
too late. No, 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 no. You're blood. on. You're Telluride on. is the shit. The skin, the bars. Too bad we didn't tape that last bar we were in with everybody dancing. Hey. It was fun. It was just fun watching. You could have started a riot. And it, and it was dark. Yeah, you guys, yeah. You guys could have started a riot. You guys could have took it over the dance floor. I was standing there and the thing's bowing. You know? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. show you the back and we're gonna party here eventually but there's no band right now out really late but we're having a good <laughs> Peg? Once a year, Peg drinks. Here Once it is. a year. March? Oh, no, not March. Maybe watch, not. watch and learn. If March, you're lucky, if we come back next year, day. you might see it one more time. If you're lucky, she'll tell you the right date. March 25th. <laughs> that would be 2 27 a.m. Mm -hmm. Can I have the rest of this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I live. I live for these crust days, I tell you. I just, I just don't get enough crust. I Those are your lucky days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gotta save some for the homeless. Shh. Good boy. Shit. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're out of town. I need you all off the You guys are gonna have fun. <laughs> Snow in San Luis Obispo in October. We'll explain in two minutes. It was a frosty day at Cal Poly. That's because the Cal Poly Ski Club built a 900-pound snowman to promote the club's Christmas ski trip. But the near 80-degree temperatures weren't too agreeable with the colder-natured snowman. It started melting a bit, and by this evening, he is just a memory. Up here. 
So I need a we need duct tape and a little scissors. Duct tape I saw it somewhere.
side of a 16-mile box canyon in southwestern Colorado. Hardcore skiers, uncomfortable with the commercialism and lack of steep skiing in the Vale and Aspen-type ski towns, came to Telluride. Telluride's residents have long held the reputation of being hardcore. From Butch Cassidy, who staged his first bank heist here, to the Powder Hounds, who today challenge the treacherous backcountry, Telluridians are known for their individualism. That individualism is evident both on and off the snow. For example, town councilman Rasta Stevie, an advocate of pro-conscious development. Yeah, I got appointed to council in October, and I ran in the last April election and was beat out by the Babylon candidates by five votes because they couldn't fathom the idea of having a Rastamon at their fancy dinner parties. I would hope Tayride to look cool and funky and to keep a little bit of sense of some of our um, uniqueness here that we have because we're a mining town that, that was founded by hardcore miners. We're not a posh place for people to come and buy fur coats and dilly dally in fancy restaurants. This is a skier's mountain and a skier's town, you know, and that's what we're all about. Longtime Telluride resident Scott Kennett talks about his favorite memory of Telluride. Well, I'd have to say it was a month, the month of uh, December 1983, where it snowed every day but three days that month. And every day it was bottomless. Every day, it, every night it snowed. Every day we tracked out the mountain and wake up the next day and it would be totally untracked again. <laughs> Il a consacré sa vie pour nous, ce petit. Faut pas demander au bon Dieu sa barbe. Faut pas demander au bon Dieu sa barbe. Où fouet-je? I like when you're when you're waiting for your shot. Everything's set up and you're ready. To, you're ready to go and. Um, and you're kind of on standby and you're getting psyched up and people are watching and waiting for you and then when you finally let it rip and have a good run and everything happens the way you want it to it's just it's a really neat feeling you know to be in the movies and be part of it and and ripping it with your friends and everything Jaja 
St. Moritz and those other world-class things. That's what I'm trying to help Tay Rock keep from becoming is a world-class, ritzy-type scene, you know?
I'm gonna make it! Shit! Yeah, there you go. Grab a ski. Oh. Get it. Oh. Get it. Oh. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it.
century. A million dollars a stake. You search for your demigod. They fake where the saints